anyone who has practiced meditation, and uh, these days it's become very popular, will often complain, I have too many thoughts, and uh, what can I do about it? So before I even begin to answer that question, I think it's more important to understand what what is thought? Where does thought come from? So let's see if we can unpack the mystery of thought in the next few moments. So if you close your eyes right now and do nothing, you'll become aware that you are speaking to yourself. Okay. You're speaking. That's what thought is, you know, internal dialogue. And this internal dialogue is also called inner speech or actually more accurately internal monologue because you are speaking to yourself. And uh, people experience this in different ways. <clears throat> so it can take different forms. Uh, first is inner speech, a voice speaking words in your head often perceived as your own voice. I have that a lot. And then there's partially worded speech, a voice speaking some words, but not full sentences. And then uh, there is worded thinking, wo worded thinking, words without a voice, like silent reading, when you read something silently, there's no voice for some people. And then there's unworded speech, a sense of a voice without specific words. <clears throat> so not everyone experiences internal dialogue in the same way. Some people have a constant narrative in their mind, while others may have a quieter mental landscape with fewer verbal thoughts. Some individuals may rely more on visual imagery or abstract concepts rather than words. <clears throat> <clears throat> the internal dialogue serves various functions, including uh, organizing thoughts, self-reflection, problem solving, rehearsing future scenarios. It's a complex cognitive process that reflects our inner mental life and can provide insights into our thought patterns and emotions. And of course, it can influence our mental and ultimately physical health. You know, if the, if the internal dialogue is critical, self-deprecating, it can lead to decreased self-esteem, anxiety, depression, and so on. If it has a positive impact, then it can support confidence, boosting inner voice, can enhance mental well-being, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's uh, go beyond that but into the idea that uh, in the deeper reality, the internal dialogue is both past experience and karma, which is the same thing. Uh, karma is not only past experience, but interpretation of experience. So in the Vedic tradition, the internal dialogue is believed to be influenced by past experiences and karma. In fact, it is an expression of past experience and karma. It's seen as a, a reflection of our accumulated experiences, memories, and learned patterns of thinking. These past experiences shape our mental habits and the content of our inner speech. You may have heard the word samskara. So in Vedic philosophy, samskaras are mental impressions left by past actions and experiences. These impressions are thought to influence our current, current thoughts and behaviors and create habitual patterns of thinking, speaking, behavior. And so karma or our past actions is not only surfacing as our internal monologue or dialogue, but it creates tendencies and predispositions that affect our present thoughts and behaviors. This karmic influence is believed to manifest as our internal dialogue. You also may have heard the expression basanas. 
These are latent tendencies or impressions from past lives that can surface in our current thoughts and in our speech. So when we engage in observing our internal dialogue without attaching to it, without identifying with it, remember the observer of an experience, <clears throat> including a mental experience, is independent of the experience. So when we do that, then actually the mind starts to purify and starts to go more in the direction of pure consciousness. Similarly, self-reflection um, aids us because the internal dialogue can also be seen as a tool for self-reflection and understanding our own nature and past conditioning. The past conditioning is what projects itself as the uh, subtle body, which is called uh, mind, intellect, and ego, which then projects itself as the physical body. And of course, uh, if you practice advanced spiritual techniques like dharana, dhyana, samadhi, then you can transcend the conditioned internal dialogue, gain higher states of consciousness, and eventually actually use pure consciousness to experience multiple realities as um, each reality is the confluence of knower, known, and knowing. Each reality that you experience is the confluence of knower, knowing, and seeing. Uh, and and knower, knowing, and known, or seer, seeing, and scenery. Observer, observing, and observed. This has often been described as the Samhita, of Rishi, Rishi, which is pure consciousness of the seer, Devata, the divine modes of manifestation, and Chandas, the physical forms that arise, all from the trinity of pure consciousness, which contains infinite knowers, infinite modes of knowing and infinite forms and phenomena known. That's who I am, the Samhita of observer, observed, and observed. The Samhita or the togetherness of knower, knowing, and known in infinite differentiated expressions of itself. That's Tattvamasi again. Who am I? I am the immeasurable potential of all modes of knowing, all perceived known phenomena and forms, and all channels that we can call knowers. And this is, again, the matrix. Remember, you. this book is going to guide you on how to use prompts for elevating spiritual intelligence, but also um, my uh, uh, digitaldeepak.ai is available now to you, free of charge, uh, on any browser. Let me know, friends, if all this is useful.